Hello, pre-calculus students. This is a video for um, unit three, topic three, lesson one. We're going to talk about trig identities. So this is um, the lesson for this week. So we're starting with an icebreaker. Um, imagine that you'll be stuck by yourself on a deserted island for a week. You'll have plenty of food and water and someone will rescue you after a week, but there's no electricity, no Wi-Fi, and you can only bring three items with you, what three items would you bring? So think about answering that if you would. Um, so here's what we're looking at today. Here's what we're studying. We're studying the fundamental trig trigonometric identities. So we're gonna do, we're gonna look at Pythagorean identities, odd, even, and co-function. We'll, uh, I'm gonna just give you a, a lecture in the video and then we're going to practice a few and then there'll be an exit question. Remember that your asynchronous assignment for um, March 9th and 10th will be due on March 17th and so will the mini formative assessment on today's video lesson. Um, that Those will both be due the, the March 17th. All right, so this is an opportunity for you to answer, get any questions answered about the review pair deck, um, about the asynchronous assignment. Since this is a video, you can't ask me questions because you're watching the video, but you can always email me. So if you missed the lesson and you're watching this video, just email me if you had questions about the asynchronous assignment. All right, so here are the three types of identities we're going to be discussing today. Pythagorean identities, odd even identities, and co-function identities. So we'll start with Pythagorean identities. So, and we had a little taste of this last lesson, so we're going to discuss just discuss these a little bit. So Pythagorean identities. So if this is a right triangle, we already know, say this is theta. We already know that we have our opposite side to theta, our adjacent side to theta and our hypotenuse. And we know that the Pythagorean states that the, the sum of the squares of the sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So we would write that as in this triangle, O squared plus A squared equals H squared, right? If we divided, both sides of the equation by h squared, that's actually going to give us one of these identities. So opposite squared over h squared, that you recognize that as sine squared, opposite over um, hypotenuse. I don't know if I said adjacent or not. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine squared, right, of let's say theta, plus adjacent squared over hypotenuse squared would be cosine squared of theta. And then of course, h squared over h squared is just one. So that's actually one of our uh, Pythagorean identities is that um, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is going to be equal to one. So this is actually going to enable us to simplify. These identities are going to enable us to simplify a lot of expressions that we see. Okay, so now let's say that we wanted to uh, explore this a little bit more. Let's. What if we, instead of dividing everything by um, the hypotenuse squared, what if we divided everything by the adjacent side squared, right? That's legal. We're dividing both sides by the same number. So we haven't done anything against math rules. Um, although I just did, cause I just wrote H squared instead of A squared. We haven't done anything that's against math rules. We're just going to, um, see what happens, right? All right. So opposite squared over adjacent squared, you recognize that as tangent squared of theta. Adjacent squared over adjacent squared is one. And then hypotenuse squared over adjacent squared is secant squared. Okay, so that's another one of our Pythagorean identities. So tangent squared of theta plus one is equal to secant squared of theta. Okay, all right, let's try one more. And I think you know where we're going with this because it's the one we haven't done yet. So if you would like to pause the video and see what happens when you try the dividing by the last uh, the last side that is available in this sequence, then feel free to pause and see what happens. All right, so we haven't divided by opposite yet. So let's divide both sides by opposite squared and see what happens. So opposite squared over opposite squared is one. Adjacent squared over opposite squared is, that's cotangent squared of theta. Hypotenuse squared over opposite squared, that is 
cosecant squared of theta. So that's our third identity, one plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared of theta. So we're gonna use these a lot. Uh, you know, I think that the, the idea behind this is that when you encounter some of these expressions, when you're you know, working with, with your trig, you wanna recognize that you can get these things in an easier form, right? Um, you don't have to, if you find something that's overwhelming, you know, and you're thinking, oh, how am I gonna, in calculus, take the derivative of this or take the integral of this, uh, the trig identities help you in terms of simplifying and making it an easier expression. So that's kind of where we're, where we're going with this. So of course, because these are addition equations, you know, other forms of the equation will work. So let's take, uh, let's take for example, um, tangent squared of theta plus one. So if we have tangent squared of theta plus one equals secant squared of theta, if you saw, you know, an expression that said, okay, um, let's say secant squared of theta minus tangent squared of theta, and you had to simplify that, hopefully you'd recognize that that's just a version of one, right? Because if you, if you took this identity equation and subtracted tangent squared of theta from both sides, you'd end up with one. So you might see this, these identities, you know, not necessarily in this order, um, but you just want to be able to recognize when it's okay to use them. All right, so let's go on to the, our next identity, which is um, odd and even identities. So we've talked before about how uh, an, e, an odd function is a function in which f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. And I'm going to make this a little smaller, an even function is where f of negative x is equal to f of x. That was one of our first lessons in the course. Um, and then we've also talked a little bit about how sine, here's, a, here's your sine graph here, sine is an odd function, right? Every, all the symmetry is across the, the x and the y axis with a sine function, right? So here's x, y, and this is um, negative x, negative y, all, all across the board for all the points. So sine is an example of an odd function, okay? And so is tangent, and so are their reciprocals. So cosecant of x is an odd function, um, and, and uh, cotangent of x is an odd function, right? For even functions, remember, even functions have that symmetry that's easier to see. So cosine is an example of an even function. It reflects across the y-axis, right? F of negative x is equal to f of x. So our even functions are cosine of x and its reciprocal secant of x. Those are our even functions. So the example, the, the, the purpose of highlighting this is that if you, if you see cosine of negative x as a, um, a problem, you see it somewhere in an expression, you can simplify this or change it to cosine of x. They're the same thing. If you see tangent of negative x, that's equivalent to negative tangent of x. So the idea between the odd and even identities is just so that you recognize if you see you know, the, the trig function of a negative um, independent variable, you need to know how to simplify it. So in the case of the odd functions, f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. Um, in the case of the even functions, f of negative x is equal to f of x. And then lastly, we have our co-function identities, identities. So these are pretty interesting. So I like to explain this like sort of a, um, like looking at a real triangle. So let's say I'm trying to find the sine of 30. The sine of 30 degrees in this case would be opposite over hypotenuse. So it would be one X over two X or one half. Um, now let's think about, well, what's the cosine of 60? Cosine of 60 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is again, x over two x or one half. So as long as, and this is gonna be true for any complementary angle. So as long as these are complementary angles, meaning they add up to 90 degrees, um, the value is gonna be the same, right? So sine of 
theta is going to be equal to cosine of pi over two minus theta, or you might see it as cosine of 90 degrees minus theta. So as long as the two angles add up to 90 degrees, the values are going to be the same for, for sine and cosine. And the reverse is, or the, uh, the, is this the inverse? No, the converse is true too. So cosine of theta is equal to sine of pi over two minus theta, or it's equal to sine of 90 degrees minus theta. Okay, so sine and cosine are co-functions. So secant and cosecant, it's the same idea, right? Because these are just the reciprocals. So the secant of um, 60 degrees would be one half, would be two, and the cosecant of 30 degrees would be, would be two as well. So secant of theta would be cosine of pi over two, not cosine, cosecant. cosecant of pi over two minus theta or cosecant of 90 degrees minus theta if you're working in degrees and vice versa. Cosecant of theta is equal to secant of pi over two minus theta or secant of 90 degrees minus theta. Okay, and then lastly, same with cotangent, tangent and cotangent tangent of theta is equal to cotangent of pi over two minus theta or cotangent of 90 degrees minus theta and then vice versa. That's, that's what I meant to say, not inverse or converse, vice versa. Cotangent of theta is tangent of pi over two minus theta or tangent of 90 degrees minus theta, right? So this is the, the place where the names of the trig functions makes the most sense. Co-function. So what is my co-function? Co-function of sine is cosine. Co-function of secant is cosecant. And co-function of tangent is cotangent. So we suffered a lot in the last unit when we were like, well, cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other, but they start with opposite letters and that's confusing. Yeah, it is. But this is where it makes sense. Whatever is added to co is that function's co function. Okay. So finally, something is making some sense with how these things are named. All right. Uh, moving right along. So we've done all the three types of identities that we're going to discuss today. The formula sheet that you're going to get is only going to have the, the Pythagorean identity. So I've linked it here. It's the county's formula sheet. Um, for this quarter or yeah this quarter right so all it has is the these these three identities the ones that we obtained in the first slide the pythagorean identities all the other trig formulas that they have are formulas that we're going to use next week so these these three here are the the only ones that they have so you're going to have to learn I'm not going to say memorize, but practice enough so you're comfortable with co-function identities, which we just talked about. And I also would like for you to get comfortable with <laughs> moving a slide. There you go. Odd and even, right? So remember your even functions, cosine and its reciprocal, which is secant. Your odd function, sine, its reciprocal, um, tangent and its reciprocal. Those are odd functions. Okay, let's put them into practice and try a few. So there'll be a few types that you're gonna wanna try. And the idea is to recognize what, what skill you wanna use. So sometimes you're just gonna wanna break your trig expressions down into what they're made up of, right? So here's a case where you have secant squared of x times cosecant of x divided by tangent of x. Okay, so Secant, what is secant squared of x but one over cosine of x times cosine of x? Okay, so, so we can actually just break that down into its elements. Cosecant of x is just one over sine of x, right? And then um, 
if you have if you're dividing everything by sine of x then that means you have another sine of x here right so this whole expression if we were to simplify it would just be we could either say it's one over cosine of x squared times sine of x squared or we could say it's uh, secant squared of x times cosecant squared of x. Either way is fine. So sometimes you're just going to want to break the expressions down into their ratios to simplify a little bit. All right. Um, here's another example. So here we need to recognize odd and even functions and opportunities to use the co-function identity. So here we have cosine of pi over two minus x. We want to recognize, ooh, co-function, right? The co-function of cosine, and once you're taking this argument, would be sine of x. Ooh. Sine of x. Okay. So that's sine of x, and and then we multiply by cosine of negative x, which, right here, we know that because this is an even function. This is an even odd identity. Cosine of negative x is just equal to just cosine of x. So sine x cosine of x is the simplified version of this expression. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try these. Go ahead and pause the video and try these. And when you're done, resume and we will see how you did. All right, let's see how you did. So the only real opportunities these had is um, are the Pythagorean identities and just breaking them down. I didn't really have too much odd even or co-function, but um, just see how you did. Um, I feel like this is cut off a little bit. There you go. If you look at the bottom there, that's the full the full answer. All right, so. There's some practice in the module, um, just some summary, a summary and reminders that trig identities can be used to manipulate trig expressions to an easier form. Remember that you have two assignments due next Wednesday. And then next Monday, we have a slight schedule change, which you can look at our school's website and, and look at that in more detail. And then just remember that March 24th, there is a progress check Wednesday, at nine o'clock. We are administering the quarter three math progress check. Okay, so this is the exit question. In class, we had it as a one question, multiple choice question, but you can um, do this as you see fit. So cosine of pi over two minus x times sine of x divided by cosine squared of x. Um, try and simplify it and see what you get. All right, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.